Hi, all of you. Good one. Anybody have any question from previous topic? Have you tried MCV or still to do? Somebody want to say something? <coughs> okay, you could not complete it. Okay, so today we are going to start with the Docker. Okay, and civil we completed it in the last class. So I will be telling you what is the Docker, okay, how you can use the Docker, why we are using the Docker, these all things we'll discuss, and then we'll start with the practical. Okay. So let's just start. Just give me a second. So anybody heard about the Docker previously? Anything about this Docker? Have you heard about it? Or you are totally new? <clears throat> yes, uh, there are uh, self-sufficient containers uh, uh, with packages uh, uh, to run applications within the containers. Okay. Okay, but why Docker? Like, what is the problem with our the previous whatever the way approach we are using it from the years on year? Like we are using the. Okay, let me first discuss you what approach we are using so you will be able to correlate with us. So. So basically, uh, why if somebody will ask you that why you require a computer? Okay, so what will be your answer? Anybody? That if somebody is asking you why you require computer, what is your final goal to achieve with the computer? Again, I'm adapting it like for what purpose you are using the computer. There should be some goal, right? For that only you are using your laptop, your lab computer. So what is that thing? This is a normal question, right? I think you also have the answer. You can type it in chat also. There is no any problem if you don't know what's wrong. For what purpose or like for what you want to achieve with your computer, why you are using your computer, what is the final thing? Are you understanding the question or question is confusing? Yeah, Nikhil. You want to say? No, I'm, I'm thinking maybe uh, it could be uh, quite a few answers to that, but uh, some of the things that comes to mind is uh, making our lives easier um, for some of the things uh, that you want to do. So, for instance, having a 
chat online we're having a meeting on computer and then uh, okay so all if, doing all this work okay what is the basic things you are doing in the computer like even for doing the chat or something okay so there will be something every time you are switching on your laptop the first thing you are doing it to do the chat so what will be that i just take it let me make it simple you want to do the chatting on the skype okay or basically on the facebook okay so what will the first step you will be doing if you want to start a chatting on the facebook application boot, boot the do? os okay you started the laptop after that <clears throat> Then you go into the application and start the application. Yeah, that's all. That is the answer. Like in any part of the world, either you are using mobile phone, you are using the computer. Okay, you are only using this computer or mobile phone to use an application. Okay, there is no any other purpose. When you are opening this file explorer, that is also an application. Brave browser or Google Chrome, that is also the application. Okay, so your final goal is just to. launch an application okay so that's the only thing i want to convey here <laughs> now once you got to know that our work is all towards with the application itself if there is no application then there is no need of a, um, a laptop there is no need of the mobile phone because just think like a scenario that there in a mobile phone there is no application nothing there is no caller tab there is no messages application there is no chatting application there is nothing no play store nothing so for what purpose you will be using the mobile phone right there is application that's why you are using and to run any application what is the basic requirement okay like where that can an application run will an application will able to run on google drive no will an application <laughs> can run on normal uh, your hard disk or hard drive directly no you will require a proper operating system okay and on top of that operating system your application should be installed you cannot say that i am running an application without any operating system this cannot be true even in your mobile phone you have the android you have the ios on top of that your application is running okay application cannot run without the operating system so two things you got to know that whatever the work we are doing in the computer or mobile phone everything is dependent on the application and application is dependent on the operating system so is this two things clear to all of you yes thank you. okay now once you got these two things so we got that the operating system installation is the most important part here okay because if we will not install the operating system we cannot do anything okay now if you will try to google the thing that what are the different ways to install the operating system okay so you'll find the different different option available in the market okay the first thing is the bare metal have you heard about it anybody bare metal yes bare metal servers or bare metal uh, it's uh, usually vmware uh, that's be known as a bare metal no not the vmware vmware comes under the virtualization uh your normal laptop okay your normal laptop is working on the bare metal bare metal means we have the hardware physically present with us we have the cpu we have the motherboard we have the speaker everything we have okay and on top of that we are installing the operating system like in our laptop inside our laptop ram is present cpu is present hard disk is present everything is there and on top of that hardware directly we are installing the windows operating system okay so this concept is known as the bare metal where you are installing the operating system directly on top of the hardware after in the bare metal if you try to install any operating system like windows or something it will take more than half an hour one hour time okay to just provision the operating system now once we got that bare metal is the thing where we have the hardware physically present with us we are installing the operating system on top of that it is taking more than one hour time to install the operating system the second thing is the cloud computing cloud computing what we are usually doing from the starting itself okay we are launching an ec2 instance we are always seeing that in just 1 to 2 minutes 3 minutes time that cloud our ec2 instance is getting launched so whenever you are launching the ec2 instance okay on the linux so which operating system we are using amazon linux so they are getting configured in less than 2 to 5 minutes and this is known as cloud computing because here you are not getting the hardware like is aws is providing you any ram cpu delivered to your home 
No. This RAM, CPU, hard disk, everything is present in their data center. And on using that um, physical hard disk, everything uh, that is present on their uh, data center, they are installing an operating system and they are just giving you the access through the cloud. Okay. And that's why it is known as the cloud computing. And this is a paid service. Okay. It is a little bit faster, but again, it is a paid service. But again, why it is faster? It is it is faster just because uh, AWS already configured all these operating system, everything directly in their system. Okay. And that's why it is faster. But again, cloud computing is also using the virtualization only in the background. Okay. So I will tell you what is the virtualization. Uh, virtualization is a concept uh, where you are installing uh, a operating system on top of other operating system. Okay. Like somebody was telling about VMware, everything. So this all comes under the virtualization. So like this is my base Windows system. Okay, this is my base Windows. Currently I'm using. So this Windows, whatever you are seeing it here. Okay, this Windows. Uh, this Windows is running on top of the hardware. Okay, top of the hardware means RAM, CPU, everything is present in my laptop. That So this Windows, if somebody will ask you, this Windows is installed by which way of provisioning, you'll simply say bare metal because we are installing this on top of hardware directly. Now, if I open a software called Oracle VirtualBox, something like this. Uh, <clears throat> okay, if I open the software. In this software, uh, I shown you one time before, I think, uh, Ubuntu, right? So this Ubuntu is installed here. So if I'm going to start this Ubuntu here, okay, so a new operating system will be going to be started. Okay, but where that operating system is running, is that running directly on the hardware? No, this operating system is running on top of our operating system. That is our Windows operating system. So whenever you are running any other operating system on top of some other operating system like Windows, Mac OS, Linux, something, it can be anything, okay? But you are running one operating system on top of other operating system. This type of the concept is known as the virtualization. We are using the different type of the virtualization tool like Oracle, VMware. Okay. This provide a hypervisor type of the thing. Again, I don't want to go in that much details. Hypervisor concept, everything here. But you can understand they are creating some type of the layer whenever you are downloading this software. Okay. And that layer is helping us launch one more operating system on top of this. Have you shown this? This one tool running anytime previously? This I don't remember. Anybody remember? Have you shown this? This Ubuntu running or not? Yes, yes. Okay. <clears throat> so that is the same way we are doing. So this is the known as the virtualization. And the fourth way uh, that is coming under Docker. And again, the virtualization also take around 40 to 50 minutes to install everything. Okay. Because at last, again, they are using the concept of bare metal only. But rather than using the physical hard disk, physical everything okay they are creating a virtual everything so there will be a virtual so let me tell you something like this virtual example so it seems uh like whatever the ubuntu operating system is running okay like in the ubuntu i given the base memory as 6144 mb of ram that means this ubuntu will think that they have the 6 gb of ram okay and four processor but that is not true like if i open my task manager in my windows okay you will see that currently how much RAM I have. I have more than 17, 18 GB free. Okay. So we have around 20 GB here. Okay. Now in this 20 GB, I just allocated 6 GB to the Ubuntu. So whenever this Ubuntu will start, they will be under the 6 GB limit itself. Okay. And for this Ubuntu, they will think that only 6 GB RAM is available in this machine. But that is not true. This is the virtual thing. Okay. And we virtualize the thing that you have to use only 6144. And whenever you require these resources, you can take the help of the Windows operating system. Windows operating system going to share you that resources from here. Okay, so if I start it, you'll see that this RAM utilization is going to increase because from here only they are taking it. Okay, so this is known as a virtualization where they are sharing the resources from the original hardware. Okay, but they are not directly in the content. Okay, there are the, some tool that is the virtualization tool, which are again using some type of the concept called hypervisor. Okay, in the background to take the resources. If I quickly start it, you'll see this RAM utilization is going to increase. I'm starting it. It is powering. Meanwhile, if you'll see from 8.2, it will be going to start. 8.48 became, uh, it will be start. 8.5, 8.6, 8.7, 8.8, 8.9, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.
it will be keep increasing we'll see like this way it will be keep loading it will be going to keep increase see even if we utilization raised to 91 900% something like this because they are they are taking the resources see up to 9 gb it went 9.2 gb so they are taking the resources from here okay, so you can clearly see this so i did not give an extra ram or anything from the one to i just say, said them that i am giving you the permission for the 6 gb ram usage you can ask to the base operating system they will share with you and if somehow uh, this machine don't have that much ram available so this ubuntu is never going to get that okay so that type of the things also you can you can see this ubuntu operating system is launching perfectly okay and it went up to 9.4 gb something because currently they are using 1 gb 1.5 gb only okay in the starting so that's why but they can go up to 6 gb because we given that limit so whenever they will require they will do it uh let's close this part of the consume now once you got the idea about virtualization bare metal cloud computing then there comes the docker okay so there is some limitation in the virtualization what is the limitation in the virtualization virtualization say uh that take an example let me give you some way just try to understand okay uh <coughs> if anything is unclear please ask it this is some concept that will not get it easily that's why i want to explain it a little bit in easy way okay so what is the problem with virtualization why we are going to the containerization technology there should be some problem right so like every time i whenever i started the new technology i all, always discussed you that what was the problem previously like even in the ansible case everything was doing manually then we require automation then we got with the ansible similarly with the git previously we are using the sbn tool then we require some problem there so we went to this git okay so like this way there is some problem with the kind of virtualization that's why we are going to the containerization so what is the problem so virtualization say that take an example your base operating system base operating system currently in my case is windows okay so if your base operating system have 20 gb ram okay 20 gb ram okay now if you are going to launch four machine using the oracle virtual box or vmware four machine okay uh, first machine, take an example, you want to launch Ubuntu. Second, you are going to launch a Red Hat. Third, you want to launch CentOS something. Fourth, you want to launch something like Kali Linux. Kali Linux. Okay. So you have in total 20 GB RAM. Now they are saying that there is one problem here. What is the problem? Uh, <coughs> Okay, so now for the Ubuntu, take an example, I given 5 GB RAM, 5 GB RAM. Okay, I allocated to the Ubuntu 5 GB RAM. Red Hat, I allocated uh, 4 GB RAM. Okay, CentOS, I given again 4 GB RAM. Okay, and this Kali Linux, I given 6 GB RAM. So how much total it will be? around 19 gb something okay so in 20 gb ram i allocated how much ram 19 gb already allocated now if somebody is coming here and can say that can you launch one more operating system uh, like parrot or something okay again parrot is also an operating system don't get confused that why i'm writing any animal name or something uh, <laughs> So Parrot is again an operating system uh, similar to Kali Linux. Like I said, you in starting itself, Kali Linux is meant for hacking. Similarly, Parrot is also meant for hacking. Okay, uh, all the hackers use this type of operating system because all the hacking related tools are pre-installed here. So how much RAM currently available in our machine? Entirely, we have the 20 GB RAM, 5 GB I allocated to Ubuntu, 4 GB Red Hat. 4 GB this one. So 19 GB we already allocated. Okay. If I'm going to say that pair out, I want to give you 4 GB RAM. And I started all these five machine together. Do you think that it is going to work? What do you think? 
will it work or it fail anybody i give it in the scenario i am going to shut all this five percent together and even windows is running so what do you think will it start or how is it not all will be able to start okay <clears throat> and also see i given you the hypothetical situation okay we are taking example windows is not taking any resources but that is not the case even if i look in the task manager currently no one to nothing is running but windows is taking around 7 to 8 gb of ram in my case okay because windows will be also going to use some resources right because this is also an operating system on top of this windows only you are running this all software so definitely let's reserve that in this 20 gb ram 4 gb is getting reserved by the windows itself okay because windows will be also keep running so they will be using these resources for gb ram so we have remaining with the 16 gb ram okay so at most what we can do is we can allocate 4 gb 4 gb 4 gb and 4 gb to each okay so total 16 gb will be there because 4 gb ram is derived to the windows this parrot is not going to run uh, because um, only 16 GB RAM is available and this 16 GB is allocated to this four operating system only. Okay. And also the problem is not here. Like still we are able to launch four more operating system on a single laptop. So in total, how many operating system currently we are running? We are running five for this one and one is the Windows. So still that is good. But the problem again comes here that if I want to launch one more operating system, okay, so I have to shut down one, then only I can do it. Okay, that is the one problem. If I start Ubuntu, then I will start the parrot. That is going to work perfectly fine. Okay. The second problem here comes is take an example in Ubuntu. I started some high extensive apps or something. Okay. Like we open Photoshop or something like this. So when you are opening Photoshop like app in the Ubuntu, so they will require more RAM than 4 GB RAM. Okay. So take an example our Photoshop. Uh, I started to say that I will require at least 6 GB RAM. Okay, 6 GB RAM. Now, how they will be going to provide this 6 GB RAM to the Photoshop shop because one to only have the 4 GB. Are they going to ask to the Windows or something? No, because you allocated only 4 GB, so they have to do only 4 GB and all other RAM are reserved, so it cannot uh, withdraw the limit from there. And that is the problem because whenever you are reserving the 4 GB RAM, okay, Maybe this Red Hat is using only 1 GB for now. Okay, Red Hat, there is no any application running on the Red Hat. So Red Hat is just using 1 GB RAM. CentOS may be only using 2 GB RAM for now. Okay, Kali Linux may be using only half an GB RAM, something like this for now. Okay, like 0 0.5 GB only. So still we have so many RAMs available. 3.5 GB here I am remaining, 2 GB here remaining. Okay, so 5.5 here I am remaining 3. So around 8 GB RAM is still available. Okay. And this one to require 4 GB RAM, they already have, they require two more GB. So are they able to take the resources from here? No, because this type of the virtualization concept tells that if this RAM is allocated to me, I'm not going to share to the others. Okay, so this Red Hat, CentOS, Kali Linux is not going to share the remaining resources with the Ubuntu. And if they are not going to share the resources with the Ubuntu, the problem, what will happen? This adopt Photoshop, whatever the software you are running in the one to that requires 6 GB RAM, it is not going to work. Okay. And for that, solving this actual use cases, we require that some different uh, tools or some different technology which can help on this. Okay. So our final goal is to go with some different type of the technology where we can launch multiple operating system. That is the first thing that we are getting the option in the uh, virtualization also. Second thing, if this Ubuntu requires more resources, okay, so they should able to share the resources from other system, okay? Like if Red Hat is not using, so why they will keep the 3 GB RAM for now? He can share it with the Ubuntu. And whenever he will require, that time maybe Ubuntu is not requiring, so Ubuntu can share with that. So this sharing and caring option is not available in this virtualization. But the new technology, whatever came in the market, that is containerization, uh, they totally change the definition everything. They say you don't have to worry about what we'll do is 
So something like this. Containerization will first tell uh, that I will not take that much resource. If you want to use Ubuntu or something, uh, I will get around 200, 300 MB resource. That is more than enough. I don't require that much because our application will be so less. Why so less? <laughs> because they are saying I'm not going to use any operating system or something. Okay. So whenever you are downloading the Ubuntu, okay. So if you remember in the starting, uh, I told you uh, that Ubuntu is an operating system, right? And how Ubuntu is communicating to the uh, hardware? Do anybody remember? By using what Ubuntu is uh, communicating to the hardware? Anybody remember? Or any other Linux operating system, how they are communicating with the hardware? In the first class of the Linux, I think I explained it. Nobody remember? We talked, right? Whenever you are opening an application like Google Chrome or something, what is happening in the background? How Google Chrome is taking the resources of 4GB RAM, 6GB RAM from the hardware. Do you remember? At least say yes or no. If you don't remember, please say no at least. Whenever you are opening the Google Chrome, how they are taking the resources from the hardware, I given you the actual path, right? And I explained you. So entire Linux is over, okay. Git is over, AWS is over, and Civil is over, okay. And the first basic thing I'm asking you that how that hardware getting communicated. Nobody remember about the kernel. We discuss about the kernel in so details, right? Still nobody remember. See, these are the basic things you have to revise the concept, right? Because in the interview or something, if somebody is going to ask you if it will be blank, then I don't know how it is going to happen, right? So you have to keep revising, revising the concept, try to utilize your weekend, try to spend two hours, three hours time in the weekend, okay? And try to revise from the previous topic. So these are the basic things. Anybody can ask you what is the flow, okay? How a operating system or how an application is able to communicate to the hardware. Then you have to tell that flow. So just remember that, okay? It requires the kernel. <laughs> and I said you that um, either you are using Ubuntu, Red Hat, Kali Linux, whichever operating system you are using, okay? In the background, they are using the Linux kernel only, okay? So whenever you are using the containerization tool and technology, they say that we are not going to install the entire operating system or anything. Why? Because installation of operating system taking 16 minutes time, 40 to 15 minutes time, right? So if I make it that much bigger, then again, what is the benefits of using the virtualization of pair better? So they say, what I will do is, uh, we will remove the operating system part from here, okay? So I said to you that whenever you are using the Ubuntu operating system or something, okay? So it consists of two parts. Your operating system consists of two parts. One is the Linux kernel, okay? And second is the OS. Uh, it can be Ubuntu or something. Ubuntu, Red Hat, something like this. So basically, when both these two are, are not Ubuntu, basically you you can remember if anybody went through my class, GNU, collection of free software. 
Do you remember this? Anybody? These things I already shown you. Collection of free software, GNU. Or just thing else you don't remember. Anybody remember this? That in the handwritten documents I shown you that Linux kernel plus GNU is equal to the operating system. No? See, if you don't remember, let me show you. Because I'm not saying that it is, I'm directly asking you today. If we'll come to this document section, you are seeing this, uh, Linux class notes, open this, and come downside here, in the starting itself. Let it open. See here, this is the exact equation, whatever I'm talking about. Linux plus GNU is operating system. Okay, and this is the thing here written. And exact same thing here I written, right? Linux kernel plus GNU is equal to OS. Okay, so it is not like in this documents, everything we already discussed about it, okay? So try to revise, because if you will not revise, all things are correlated, okay? Why we always teach Linux first before starting with the DevOps? Because DevOps totally depends on the Linux operating system, okay? If you are not uh, compatible with the Linux or something, then it will be really difficult for you to understand the DevOps tools. Because every time I'll be keep doing the example with the Linux only. So just try to revise, okay? Uh, <clears throat> now, once you got that Linux kernel plus GNU is the operating system, okay? Now, if we are going to download the Ubuntu image something, okay, from the internet, okay? Or to install using the VMware or something, so you'll you see that the image size is around 3.6 GB or something. If you are not believing me, so again, let's come here, search for Ubuntu download, okay? Uh, Ubuntu 22 download, something like this, you can search. Let it open. So here they are talking about download Ubuntu desktop. Uh, if I'll click here, download. So it is going to download a file and that will be around 3.6 GB, okay? See, 3.56 GB. So this is the size of that, okay. Now, if this much bigger size of the file I'm going to download, definitely it is going to down time of the download also to install also it will take time. And that's why the time of one hour installation in the installation is the usual thing. But now they are saying that if you are using the Docker container, okay, if you are using the Docker, so they say, I know that Linux kernel is going to be the same. Either I'm using the Ubuntu, I'm using the Red Hat, I'm using the CentOS, it doesn't matter because Linux kernel is going to be the same. Okay. Uh, every Linux use the Linux kernel. So I can remove the Linux kernel part from this code. Okay. This Ubuntu 3.6 GB file contains the Linux kernel plus GNU. Okay. I said you, Linux kernel plus GNU is the operating system. And this contains Linux kernel plus GNU code. That's why it is bigger. So what we can do is because Ubuntu also requires the Linux kernel. Uh, CentOS also requires the Linux kernel, JNU also requires the Linux kernel, everything is required in the Linux kernel, okay. And if we are installing the Docker on top of the uh, Amazon Linux, like take an example, we launched an EC2 instance here, okay. And in this EC2 instance, I'm going to install the Docker, okay. So Docker is installed here, it is getting installed in this machine. And on which operating system this machine is running? So if you'll come here, This is running in uh, Amazon Linux, right? So what do you think? This EC2 instance contains Linux kernel or not? Anybody? This machine, EC2 instance is running on the Amazon Linux operating system. Okay. So will it contains Linux kernel or not? Yes or no? Are you all there? I think it should have a Linux kernel in order to run the uh, applications. Uh, otherwise, it will not be able to uh, run the other applications. Okay, so you are not sure. Like, will it contain the Linux kernel or not? Pro I think it does contain Linux 
kernel. It's a image. Yes, it it should contain a Linux kernel. Definitely, it will be going to contain because this is a Linux based operating system. Okay, and I said you in the starting only. All the Linux based operating system contains two things. One is the kernel. One is the collection of free software. Okay, so they are going to any of contain that. Now this machine already have the code of the Linux kernel in between this, right? And if I'm using the Docker or something, so Docker containers say that what I can do is I created a software with the name Docker, okay? And that software are able to communicate with this machine kernel, okay? So this machine already have a kernel. So what you can do is you can remove this code from here, okay? Like this, your Ubuntu contains both things, Linux kernel and GNU. So just remove that Linux kernel part and just take only GNU. And if I just take only GNU, the size of our Ubuntu image from the 3.6 digit is going to reduce in the MB, around 100 MB, something like this. Because most part are written in the Linux kernel only where they are having how to communicate with the hardware everything. And only the collection of free software we require here. Collection of free software also we are going to reduce uh, because I don't want to give that much extra software to all the people. So that's why all the unwanted software, we removed it from here. And that's why the size become less than 100 MB, something like this, or 200 MB like that. So now, rather than giving the 3.6 GB, I am giving an image of 100 MB or something. But then how this image is going to work? So Docker say, uh, don't uh, worry about that part. What I can do is, whenever you are running this Ubuntu machine, okay, so your purpose is to launch that operating system. Why? because you want to run an application. Okay, so see, uh, you have to run an application. That's why you require the operating system. So operating system, you are going to launch with the help of the Docker using this Ubuntu image around 200 MB size or something. Okay, now inside this, you want to run like Google Chrome or Firefox. Okay, so that Google Chrome or Firefox requires some hardware access. So what I will do is as a Docker, I know that there is a Linux kernel available here. Okay. And anyhow, I have to take the resource from this base system only because it contains the RAM, CPU, hard disk, everything. So I will talk to their Linux kernel. Okay. And I will inform that I require 500 MB of RAM. So they will provide us from there. Okay. And that's why this lean, in this Docker container, everything become faster because they don't have their own operating system. Okay. So you can always understand that your operating system contains 100% of data. Just take an example. 100% of data, okay. So in 100% data, 95% is common in all the Linux. In all Linux, 95% data, that is basically Linux kernel, some free software, everything is already common. Only what makes difference the Ubuntu, Red Hat, CentOS, only the 5% part, okay, only 5% part. So what is the, if I do 100% of this 3.6 GB, okay, and 95% you are removing this, and if you're just taking the 5% part, okay, which is the different in all different, different operating systems. So you'll get around 200, 300 MB size only file, right? Because 95% file is going to common. So why we want to use that again and again? Okay, so that is the benefit. And that's why this uh, Docker become faster. And how much faster it becomes? So Docker can launch a new operating system in less than one second. Okay, and that is the power. Where you are spending one hour in case of the bare metal, cloud computing, you are spending two to five minutes, virtualization, you are spending 30 to 40 minutes. Docker, you are going to use it. Uh, and you will hit the command, press enter, new container will be going to start it in less than one second. And that is the power of Docker. So once you got to know that Docker can launch the operating system faster. Okay. Once you kept this thing in mind, okay, then you'll have to understand why we require the faster response. Okay, what will happen if I'm going to use the 60 minute provisioning method or 30 to 40 minute provisioning method? Or what will happen if we are going with the cloud computing two to five minute method? Again, cloud computing comes with the cost. Docker is totally free. Okay, so this cost part also you can take care. But let's compare with this bare metal or virtualization first. So we know that Docker can launch a new operating system everything in one second. Okay, virtualization bare metal taking around one hour. Now the problem will be happen uh, when uh, just think uh, like you are launching. Let me remove all this part. Now, all of you remember the load balancer concept? 
or this one also somebody forgot load balancer remember we are used different different load balancer like classic application network in the AWS. Okay, so what was the load balancer work? Anybody can tell me. For what purpose we are using the load balancer? Uh, to manage the load, uh, to manage the load across the servers. Yeah, to manage the load across the server. Now, uh, just think like this, uh, that currently there are two server running, uh, two wave server or two server are running, okay. And both the server can handle uh, I'm just giving the hypothetical number, just don't correlate with this, like, okay, only 1000 requests can be served or something like this. No, not like that. 1000 requests per machine. Okay, 1000 requests per machine they can. So in total, how many requests we can handle? Anybody? So 1000 requests per machine. So there are total two server. So every second we can handle up to 2000 requests, right? Uh, here, do anybody have any question? Up to here it is clear, right? 2000 requests we can handle per second. Now, once you got the idea that 2000 requests per second can be handled, okay. Now, what will happen if suddenly 5000 people are visiting your website? Anybody? Just think and tell me the answer. If 5000 requests have started to come per second, what will happen in this case? We have only two servers running. Uh, sir, in that case, the load will get increased, sir. Uh, that time, the I mean, SVC host process uh, in the Windows server keep on increasing, and it, it will get in hung state, sir. Hung state, okay. Uh, so how many people will be able to see that website is not working or they will be keep loading, their load time will increase? Definitely more than 3,000, right? Because 2,000 requests only can be handled. So other 3,000 people will be go in the waiting mode or something, okay? Where either they will see that page is not opening or maybe a load is getting increased, so they will, so basically get some delay in response or something like that okay now if i am saying to our customer uh, that whoever the customer coming 5000 per second okay just think like we are telling to that or google.com is telling to you that just wait for one hour why because we are launching new server okay why we are launching a new server and why it takes one hour time because i say to you that at last, whenever you will be launching the server, you have to install the operating system. And to install the operating system, it is taking around 60 minutes time, even in the virtualization 30 to 40 minutes. Then just think that somebody is telling you that please wait uh, for one hour. In that one hour time, I will be able to launch two more server or one more server. Okay. So do you think that customer is going to keep waiting for next one hour just to uh, make sure that Google is going to launch one more? then I will be able to handle the traffic. But even in one hour, they launched one more. Okay, so in total, there will be three server only. Only 3,000 requests will be handled. Still 2,000 people will be keep waiting. Again, that 2,000 people will be waiting again for one more hour. It is going to possible? No. So for that, we require some type of the provisioning, some type of the installation of operating system that can be the faster. And that's where the Docker comes in the picture. Docker say, just tell me how much many server five server ready in one second ready in one second that's all okay and since it is ready in one second for this customer who are keep waiting uh they are waiting five thousand per second in the next second already five more server was happening okay so now it total can handle seven thousand request all the request will be fulfilled in a fraction of a second and for them they will feel like everything is normal only nothing happened in the back end and that's how the traffic of the big, big company like uh, you are seeing that hot star or some Netflix or something, how they are able to handle this many traffic parallelly. So this type of the concept only where they are using the concept of containerization, okay, microservices to automate the process, to increase the load. Whenever some load will come in, automatically increasing the number of count of server. And if Netflix or hot star tomorrow started to say, like if you want to watch some series or something just wait for one more hour why because we are launching few more server nobody is going to wait for that okay so up to here is it clear you are able to understand why we require the faster um, uh, provisioning time able to understand or still confused and you can ask me no issue for that Are you able to understand? Yes or no? 
that why we require faster provisioning yes yes okay so faster provisioning always keep in mind we require okay and i given you the same example of load balancer here like if load is increased then we have to launch one more new web server for this we have load balancer now how fast a new web server can be launched matters a lot if like competitor like uh, i have i am the owner of netflix some other is owner of the hot star if hot star are able to launch new server in fraction of second and and same time i am telling like from the netflix side they are telling that we require at least one out customer is going to switch okay so that's why it matters a lot and by containerization we can set up full fledged web server full fledged operating system everything in less than one second again there are some useful commands of the docker like docker ps so docker ps is a command which will list all the running container in the docker okay if you want to list uh, how many containers are currently running container is just like to like a ec2 instance uh, basically a full fledged operating system or full fledged laptop you can say okay laptop inside laptop you are running so that is known as the container here in the docker side if we'll do docker ps a so it is going to list all the container running also stop also <clears throat> simply if you want to start any container simply give the command docker start container name <clears throat> if you want to uh, stop that docker stop container name like this way you can do and to install any operating system okay to install any operating system the minimum requirement whatever the main requirement you will have you should have the iso file why i am saying it so again just see click on new i want to install a new operating system see the main thing they are asking for the iso image without this iso image you are not able to launch an operating system like here this is the ubuntu image that is of the 3.56 gb size okay so if i'm selecting this then only other part will be going to keep working okay so this iso image is important similarly in the case of the docker also if you want to in launch any operating system or something okay so you will require a image image for that now i am telling you that ubuntu will come with only 500 mb 200 mb size so from where we'll be getting it because if i am going to this website and from here if i am trying to download ubuntu they are giving us a 3.56 gb of image so how i can use the ubuntu anything inside the docker container okay in the list mb of size so they are saying docker say that you don't have to worry uh, just open the google search for docker hub okay so they created their own website okay a docker hub simply open this <laughs> and you all have to create the account also on the docker hub so please try to create it simply open this document and here you are able to see currently i am already logged into my account but in your case you will be seeing like this let me sign out so you have to simply go to the register enter your username give a unique username okay uh, and username it is so much important thing here in the docker hub so please try to give some good username so you can always remember it also okay email password and just create your account and in this docker hub this is just like a repository for this okay so docker hub contain millions of images okay <clears throat> for every purposes everybody every people every community are keep uploading the images on every day basis okay even you can upload your own image here so if i'll search here that docker hub do you have any image for ubuntu so see we are getting this also simply select this <clears throat> see they are saying if you want to download this docker ubuntu image simply you have to hit this command that's all ubuntu will be downloaded and how much download is available 1 billion plus download in the ubuntu image similarly take an example somebody want to use the centos simply come here centos search for this centos you are getting that they are saying you have to use this command 1 billion plus download again <laughs> if somebody want to <coughs> use <coughs> Uh, some other take an example jenkins someone want to use it some other also jenkins like tool engine x for that everything there is a image available okay you can simply come see 100 million plus download for jenkins also docker pull jenkins so like this way you can keep using all the images are available here you don't have to worry about it okay that is a benefit similarly alpine again the different linux alpine their image is also available so all the images whatever you are going to use in the docker everything will be present in the docker and you can create your own image also 
and you can do it. Like if I'll search for my image, like currently see, I am not in the sign in mode, right? I am in the normal mode. I did not sign into it. But still, if I'm able to find my image, I will give my name. This is my username. Okay. I will slash and I'll press enter. All the images created by me is listed here. Okay. So these all images are pushed by me. That's why it is coming. And if I'll quickly search, what is this image? So they're talking about that. This is the image. If somebody want to use this image, they have to use this command. Okay. So like this way, if you are using this command, you'll be able to download my image. So like this way, you can also create your image. We'll be going to learn all these things. But you have to do one thing uh, by tomorrow that you have to create a Docker Hub account. Will you be able to create everybody? And if you want to take the reference, so simply come in the cloud 90. Okay, go to the lab section. Uh, in the lab section, uh, you have to open this Docker lab file. Okay, and in the Docker lab file, uh, if you'll come down, okay, if you'll come down here, I already uploaded this file. <clears throat> so I just showed you here uh, that this is the Docker app where you have to use the user ID, email, password to sign up. Once sign up will be done, then you'll try to log in. Okay, once login is successful and you are able to see this type of the page, uh, in your case, it will be totally blank because you did not upload any image. Okay. But just try to see if you are able to see this screen, your username is visible here. Okay, that means your account is created. So please try to create your account by tomorrow. Everybody will be able to do it. Account creation. Can you keep it in chat? Others? Uh, I'm sorry, sir. I missed your conversation. Can you please repeat it? Uh, you have to create a Docker Hub account, okay? By going to the Docker Hub website. Uh, yeah, can... I'm sure. Okay, so that's it. Only three things you have to write. Uh, a username, email ID, password. That's all. Your account will be created. Nothing any complex. Yeah, sure, sir. I'll create it. Okay. So that's about uh, a quick idea about the Docker, what Docker can do. So at last we got to know that Docker is faster. Why we require faster response that also we discussed previously. Okay. And again, the sub commands like Docker images, Docker pull, these all things we'll be going to learn. Okay. Uh, in basically our uh, labs, you, so you don't have to worry about. So, so from tomorrow we'll start the labs. It will take around two to three days time to complete the Docker and then we'll start with the Kubernetes. Okay. So let's complete this. Uh, tomorrow we'll meet, okay? Thanks, Olaf. Thank you, sir. Thanks, bye.